Good morning. I hope everyone's doing great. We're going to get started here in just a few minutes. I'm going to give everybody about five more minutes to hop on. And I might be picking on a few of you today during our presentation since we're playing virtual games. So be prepared. <laughs> All right, I'll give everyone just one more minute and then we'll get started. All right, everybody, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to have a lot of fun today. We're talking about virtual games and what you can do for your team that's uh, working remotely or like us at Tabletop Media Group, we have a totally remote team. We don't really have an office space that everybody's required to come to every day. So for a company like mine, this has been so helpful for us to connect and feel like we are in the office together. So I hope that you find this helpful, especially during the time right now that we're living in with COVID-19. And perhaps, you know, your business, you're going to get rid of your office and move to something more virtually. I think these are all really awesome tools that you can use. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And I just always like to start off, I know a few of you have been following along for quite a while and, um, and you've been to all of our series, so you're very familiar with us by now. But this is our team. My name is Kristen Bachman. I am the one in the bottom left in the little snakeskin top. And then we also have Lewis from the team today. She's on the call. She's in the top right corner in the striped shirt. So I will be picking on Lewis a little bit this morning and then also on myself, uh, we're gonna play a virtual game to get started, um, just something kind of fast and fun. And anyway, I um, just wanted to say hello. Um, again, my name is Kristen. I'm the founder of Tabletop Media Group. Our website is on the screen and I will also have this slide up at the end so you don't have to hurry and jot down our info. If you do want to email me anytime during or after the presentation with questions, feel free to do so. The email is info at tabletopmediagroup.com. And then you can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And our handle is at tabletopmediagp. All right, so today's topic is all things virtual team games. We're gonna go over six different points today. Number one is what's the purpose of playing these virtual team games? Number two, picking the right team game for your company or for your friends, family. You can always use these for personal purposes as well. Number three, we're gonna go over Quiz Breaker, which is a great tool that our team uh, just started playing with recently, and it's been a lot of fun. Number four, water cooler trivia. Number five, Trivia Maker. And then number six, we're gonna talk about just some fun free options that you can host virtually. So we're kinda of gonna to jump to number six real quick just with a fun icebreaker that we're gonna start off with. One of the fun free options that you can host virtually on like a Zoom call, maybe you're doing a Google Hangout Meet or you're just you know talking on the phone simply, you could do what I like to call two truths and a lie. I'm sure some of you have played this I know when I was in college um, during orientation, we played this and it really helped to break the ice, helped us to get to know people that we are meeting for the very first time. So I'm going to ask for one volunteer. And if you want to chat me real quick, if you want to be a volunteer to think of two truths and a lie, please do. But I'm going to um, go ahead and go first. And so I'm going to give you two truths and a lie, and you're going to have to guess which one is my lie. So I'm going to um, letter them off by A, B, and C, 
And so after I'm done speaking all the truths and one lie, I want you to pop into the chat and either type, you know, A, I think is your lie, B is your lie, or C is your lie. So pay close attention and hopefully you'll guess it correctly, which one is my lie. So my two truths and a lie, uh, they're in all random order. So A is that I've traveled to 34 countries. B is that I got married two years ago to my husband in Italy. And then C is that I live on a farm in Warren County, North Carolina. So go ahead and pop which one you think is my lie into the chat. Tanika is saying B. We have an, another B from Carol, A from Sterling, B from Tarsia. Lewis is saying B. Heather is saying B. Sherry saying A. All right, Melissa saying A. It's funny because um, someone that I know quite well is on the chat and she guessed it exactly right. She just privately chatted me. <laughs> so um, the correct lie is actually B. So I have traveled to 34 countries. I did a lot of traveling solo on my own. Um, I did uh, hosteling and couch surfing. So I love to travel and I'm pretty adventurous. So I have traveled quite a bit. I do live on a farm in Warren County with my husband. But B is that I said I got married two years ago in Italy. It's actually only been one year. So that is my lie. So hope that was kind of fun. And now I'm going to let um, Lewis from my team do her two truths and a lie. So Lewis, if you can just unmute yourself and then um, I'll unmute you actually. And then go ahead and share your two truths and a lie. Sure. Um, hi guys. So I'm going to try to trip y'all up with this, but my first, um, these are no particular order, is that I have three siblings. Um, my second fun fact is that I have four pets. And my third is that I'm a terrible cook. So a, B, and C. Let me know what you guys think. Carol's saying A. Tanika's C. Kem is C. Tarsia, B, C. We got a lot of Bs and Cs, Lewis. Okay, well. <laughs> a, we have an A now from Gracie. Hey, Gracie. <laughs> well, it's actually, um, I do have three siblings. That one's true. Um, and I have three pets as well. I was counting my husband as one. <laughs> nice. So that was my lie. I actually, I only have three that. pets, but I am in fact also a terrible cook, unfortunately. But my husband's a good cook, so. That makes up for it. Her husband makes really amazing barbecue. I will vouch for that. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's awesome. And now I'm gonna pick on one person who is a participant today. Um, please chat me if you want to volunteer. I want somebody else to share their two truths and a lie, and then we'll move along with the presentation. So um, if nobody volunteers, I'm going to pick on somebody. <laughs> so. All right, Tarsia. All right, if you'll, I'm going to unmute you. So if you'll share your two truths and a lie in no particular order, and then we're all going to chat in the box which one we think is your lie. Are you ready? Yes, I am. All right. Um, my first one is A, and my favorite food is steak. Um, B, I wanted to be an astronaut when I was a little kid. Um, C, I have driven a police car. Hmm. All right. Put in A, B, or C into the chat. Carol saying C, Lewis says A. Kim is C, Heather saying B, Gracie and Linda and me all say C. <laughs> <laughs> all right, which one is it? So um, I did want to be an astronaut when I was a little kid. Um, I have driven a police car. I used to do um, security many years ago and we worked very closely with the sheriff department. So I was able to drive a police car, nice. um, but my favorite food is not steak. Actually, uh, that's at the bottom of the list. <laughs> what's your favorite food then? Um, it probably would be pasta. Oh, nice. 
yeah, so you tripped me up there because you took a little while to think about C. And I was like, huh, maybe she's trying to think of a really good lie, but hey, <laughs> you fooled me. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, this is always just a really fun icebreaker, I think. Um, it gets, uh, Sterling says she faked me out. <laughs> I think it's just so much fun. Everybody gets like a good laugh out of it. And you get to really just know some kind of fun facts about people. So I hope that was fun for everybody. I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody um, as well. So we'll get started now. We're going to dive into some of the different tools that are available out there that are free and that you can just pay a very nominal fee for that are a lot of fun for your virtual teams. So first of all, what's the purpose of virtual team building? Well, teams that never really meet in real life, quote unquote, find it a little bit difficult to build a rapport within the team. I know for us at Tabletop, we're all remote workers. We do have a small office in downtown Warrington, but not all of us are there at the same time. So it's really nice whenever we can actually get together in person. Um, sometimes we'll do like whitewater rafting, go strawberry picking, different things like that. But um, especially now when we actually cannot you know, be hanging out with each other, it's so important to do things virtually. So I know for us, we do um, once a week, just a team video call, which I think helps a lot because we're able to actually see each other. So um, definitely important to, if you have a virtual team, do some virtual team building activities. And it helps you to develop good working relationships. And it helps the individuals on your team to be like, be able to communicate openly and then to solve problems, and then to also collaborate. And then I also do think that virtual team building will really help to reduce those feelings of isolation and loneliness. It could be very lonely. I know I uh, worked at a company that we never got to see each other, and it was always just me on my couch with my dog, and it made me feel very isolated. I felt like I was just, you know, never getting out into the world and seeing people. So whenever you can just like pop up in a Zoom call and do like a fun icebreaker like we just did, I think that goes a really long way for your team. And then I did include a link to an interesting study if you guys want to check it out later on your free time. But what do the studies say about virtual team building? Well, they say that these exercises improve, improve your team's effectiveness and help to build trust. So those are some reasons that I think virtual team building is super important. So number two, we're going to go over picking the right team game for your company. So I think whenever you're going into this, I mean, there's a ton of team games out there. So what's your purpose and objective for playing these games? Is it to improve communication, build trust? Maybe you're going to introduce your global team members to one another. Perhaps your company is based all around the world and you want them to get to know each other a little bit better or even across the state. Maybe it's to increase productivity. Another kind of interesting objective. Maybe it's to teach people about your company culture, or maybe you're going over new policies that you want to quiz them on. That's another great um, tool that you can use a virtual game to um, really hone in and enhance those on your team. And then what's the outcome of the exercise? So it should meet your objective and also promote individual and team growth. Then next up, think about what platform you want to use to host your virtual game. So a lot of these virtual team games that are out there are really nicely integrated with Zoom. So I know that you guys are all familiar with that by now. We've been using Zoom for the past eight sessions. We also taught a class on it. So maybe think about using a platform like Zoom. There's also Google Hangouts Meet, which we went over. Slack is another one that you can integrate some of the team games into, which we did talk about on Tuesday. And then Microsoft Teams, pretty similar to something like a Zoom or Google Hangouts Meet. So figure out what platform you want to use and then see if that virtual team game can integrate really well. So number three, this is the very first tool that we're going to talk about that's out there. And I think it's a lot of fun. We just started using it uh, at Tabletop and it's just a great team building activity that focuses on improving communication and trust between your um, team members. And so you don't really need to schedule a video call to do this. I think that it's best um, because it just happens through web and email. So it's something really fun that you could do. You could schedule a video call afterwards and talk about who is like your um, highest scoring team member if you wanted to. But um, it's a really fun platform and it really just takes a few minutes to help put together and um, to play. So I'm going to go over the different steps on Quizbreaker. So basically what you do is you just go to quizbreaker.com and you want to sign up for an account. 
And then the first step in quiz breaker is that you and all the team members. So like for us, we have four people right now that are playing quiz breaker. So I invited Lewis, Jordan, and Quinn from my team. And so quiz breaker has a curated set of fun icebreaker questions. So it'll ask each team member all these icebreaker questions. And then you individually have to type in your answer and nobody on the team knows. So this is an example of one that I pulled from Quizbreaker's website. One of their icebreaker questions that they asked every person on the team was, if you could go anywhere in the world on vacation, where would you go? And so they're actually um, kind of trying to be funny and they're pulling some of the characters from the popular TV show Parks and Rec. So we have Leslie, nope, that says Pawnee is where she would go on vacation. Um, you know, there's Miami and Antarctica. So it's up to you as the individual to put in what your answer is. So after you filled out the curated set of the fun icebreaker questions, the next step is that everyone on your team will receive different quizzes via their email and they have to guess who said what. So I'm going to show you um, in just a second what the email looks like because I actually just got one this morning that I had to answer. So on email, you'll get um, just a quick question. And so this is what it would look like. So to the question, if you could go anywhere in the world on vacation, where would you go? Who do you think answered Pawnee? So Kristen got this email and I would have to think, okay, did Leslie from my team answer that or April? So I'm going to go ahead and select Leslie because I'm pretty sure she is the one that said that. And then I would say that um, I would get a notification from Quizbreaker that I was right. So it's just like a fun thing that, that you can play and you really do get to know your teammates quite well. I've learned some uh, interesting stuff through this just over the, the past few days. So everything gets to learn something new about the people that you work with in a fun and easy way. And so I'm going to show you um, what the email looks like. So I actually just got it. Um, it. It's called Who Said This? And so it's question one of five. And this is from my team. So the question is, if you could learn any other language to fluency, which one would you choose? And then it asked me, which person do you think gave this answer? And whoever this person was selected Spanish. So I'm going to click on, let's say, Jordan to see if it's correct. And so what will happen is then it'll say that I was right, um, depending on what the answer was. Um, so I have unfortunately already answered this whole quiz breaker, so you won't get to walk through all the different questions with me, but I had to answer five questions. And then after um, I've answered the five questions, I can go to the leaderboard and see who's um, the most, I guess, knowledgeable about the team. And it looks like I've gotten nine correct answers so far from my team. So I'm currently in first place, followed by Quinn and then Lewis. So it's just really fun. Um, Answering the icebreaker questions is super simple. This is the back end of what it looks like. So you would go ahead and set up um, everything on your dashboard. So um, what I've done is I have a quiz going out every Thursday at 9 a.m. And I could edit this if I wanted to, you know, for maybe I want it to go out on Mondays at 9 a.m. Or I want it to go out every two weeks or every four weeks. And then I simply just save it. I can choose that I want five questions in each quiz, two, four, whatnot. So I hit save and then I just simply invite my team members to join me on here. So what I've done is I invite them by email. So maybe I want Corey from my team to now be included and I would just simply send her an invite. So it's really, really simple to set up on the back end, just under this dashboard section and the team section. Then what you do after you've set up your team is you go to icebreakers. So this is where you'll be responsible just on your own for answering these icebreaker questions that get emailed and dispersed out to your other team members. So it will prompt you um, to see what types of icebreakers are out there for you. So what would be the ultimate gift for you to receive? I'm going to put a plane ticket anywhere in the world since you guys know I love to travel. And then I would hit answer and it would pop up more icebreakers for me to answer. So essentially you're building up a bank of icebreakers in this quiz breaker platform that can be emailed out to your team. So after you've answered them, you'll await for the quiz to come into your email inbox, you'll play, and then you can see who is the top ranking on the leaderboard. And that brings me to the leaderboard, which I give you a quick preview of. So you can toggle over and see um, who, 
who the leaders are for each quiz that go out. So, so far we've only done one quiz right now on our team. So you can see who's placed and uh, what ranking they are. And then there is a profile settings. Uh, you can choose what kind of avatar you want, put in your name, um, update your password here. And then admin settings, um, you can pick that you want easy or hard. So this is the difficulty level of what questions will be sent out to your team. So, you know, easy ones like where's your favorite place to travel or what language do you wish you could learn? Those are some of the easy ones. Hard ones, um, those will be a little bit different, a little bit more challenging for your team. Um, so play around with it, see what works best for you. You can also activate or deactivate the leaderboard feature. I'm pretty competitive, so I kind of like that. Um, so up to you if you want to do that. And then we will go over um, subscription plan. So right now, I am currently on a free trial. They give you a two-week free trial, which is really great. You can also see under here how many people um, you have under the current plan. So for the free trial, they give you up to 10 users and just one team. But after my free trial is over, I could go to the subscription plan of $15 a month. So that would be the plan that I'm currently on. It would just bump me up to $15 a month. So really not a bad price for what all you get. And you can have these quizzes sent out weekly. And it's something that you don't really have to think about organizing as like your team captain or the boss or whatever role you might play in your company. Then there is the squad. So this is for um, companies that are a bit larger. So it would have 25 users, five different teams, and it's billed at $25 a month. So I think this is really great. Like maybe you work out of school and you have different teams. Like maybe you have the kindergarten team or the first grade team, and you want to break it out based on like grade level. You could do that. And then league is a hundred users and you have unlimited teams and that's $50 a month. So I think that's really for some of those like way larger organizations, but it's something super fun. I hope that you guys found um, this helpful. I, I think it's a really great tool that you can play. So like I said, some of the features, it's really quick, it takes less than five minutes to set it up. You just saw me go in the back end and set it up and the gameplay, whenever um, you're answering those icebreakers, really only takes a couple minutes. And then once you get that quiz in your inbox, again, only takes maybe two or three minutes to play per round. So you can play precisely when you want. As you saw in the back end, you can change the day, the timing, the frequency, and volume of how often those quizzes are sent out to your team. And then it's suitable for really any team size. As you can see, um, you can really adjust the pricing based on how many number of teams you have, how many people, and then they do have even higher level plans that you can contact them to set up. So you can play all the way up to a thousand people, uh, which is really cool. So um, I love the fact that you can create like kind of those segmented out teams within one company, especially like we gave the example of the school. If you have different grade levels or like your marketing team, you just want them to play the quizzes and then your photography team, you want them to play a separate set. So I'm going um, to click on this um, quick um, homepage of Quizbreaker. So I wanted you just to see, I think it's really cool to see other companies that are using it. So you see Google is using it, Starbucks, Ford, Coca-Cola, Glassdoor, Indeed, Microsoft. So a lot of uh, companies are using this tool. So um, I think it's really neat that uh, you can just see how widely used this uh, quiz breaker tool is. And it's super easy to go ahead and set up your free trial. Simply just log on to the homepage and click try for free. And it will walk you through how to sign up. Right now you're going to my backend so you can see what the backend looks like. Um, but it's, it's super simple. All I had to do was put in my email address, my first and last name, and then it went ahead and started me with a two week free trial. So definitely go ahead, get it set up, try it out, see if it's something that your team likes. And for 15 bucks a month, it's pretty affordable um, if this is something that you like. All righty. So next up, we're going to go over another fun tool. It's called Water Cooler Trivia. I will say I love trivia, but this was kind of difficult for me and my team. They have some pretty hard questions on this, but you can set your level of difficulty. So um, for us, I had uh, put it on a medium level, but I would definitely suggest starting with the easy level and seeing what your team thinks first. But um, they have all sorts of different categories for trivia. 
that gets sent out um, to your whole office. So we'll go over that. Um, it's a really fun tool. So water cooler trivia really makes the work week way more fun. It gives you a weekly trivia contest that the whole entire office can participate in. And uh, there's one trivia contest per week and they give you 10 free response questions on uh, the trivia um, scorecard. So step one on water cooler trivia is that you wanna start a group. So you'll go to their website, watercoolertrivia.com. You'll choose your group name, which you can see in the image below. So like for us, for group name, I put tabletop media group. Then you'll fill out the form, your first, last name, your email, and a password to create an account. And then afterwards, you can invite whatever coworkers you would like to participate. And then you can customize the trivia categories and difficulty, like I mentioned. So there were some interesting trivia categories on there. There was one that was science. There was a literature one, pop culture. There was even a category called New York City that was focused on like fun New York City trivia. So there's all sorts of categories out there. So you can easily set it up all under a minute. Step two is that once your weekly quiz is emailed out to you, they email them on Mondays, for instance, it will take you hopefully less than two minutes unless you're really stumped to answer all of the questions. So this is what the back end looks like. So you'll click under, um, there's like a little brain emoji. So you click on the brain emoji and then pop over to the quiz. So you'll go and start answering these questions. Like uh, question two is an ironic detail category. And it says, despite being known as a summertime and warm weather treat, what state was the location of the first Ben and Jerry's ice cream store? I know that one, it's Vermont. So I would type in Vermont into the answer box. So it will let you just type in your answer. And then after you answer all 10 of the questions, then you'll get to, um, to look at your leaderboard for your team. So weekly winners and stats are sent straight to your inbox after everybody has completed the trivia game. And you can dig deeper for category champs and your group's all-time um, leader. So this is what the leaderboard would look like. So right now it's saying that first place is Matt. And um, you can see, like, um, you can dig into overall or into the category section. So it's pretty fun. Um, I'll show you what the back end of it looks like. So right now, um, like I mentioned, I would not be able to access the quiz because it's being sent out in 4.1 days is what it's saying. So I can't access the quiz, but if I was able to access the quiz, it would look like this image right here. So it would look like this in the back end. So right now mine is giving me a little error message because we've already answered our Monday quiz. So in 4.1 days, I'll get to do my next trivia. Then this is the leaderboard where the star section is. So right now, um, Lewis is the only one that has responded to the quiz. She is currently in first place. I could click on overall, which is where we are right now. She's the reigning champion, or I could click on categories and it would give me, um, if we have played a little bit more, it would tell me what category she is the highest in, what categories I'm the highest in, et cetera. Then you can look at your quiz archive. So this is where you can see, um, who is in first place for different quizzes and it will show you your full scoreboard. So this was our latest quiz and you could see what she got right, what she got wrong. So one of them was, um, I, I love this question, what generically named musical group had songs such as The Night They Drove Old Dixie Down and perhaps most famously The Wait? So um, you could say correct answer the band and you would get that correct. So it shows you um, what questions you've gotten correct, what questions uh, you've gotten incorrect. And then the invite button, this is where, um, say you've already set up your team, but then you forgot, oh my gosh, I need to invite Corey from my team or something. You could go ahead and type her email in there and then hit the button invite. There's also an option to have a shareable link. So you could copy the shareable link and paste that into like a large company wide email. And then they would all get that instead of typing in each individual email address. Then there is the quiz settings button. You can go ahead and set how uh, tough do you want your quizzes. I've changed it back to easy. And then you can select what categories you'd like included. I'm absolutely terrible at sports and I know some of the ladies on my team are too. So I've taken that button off. I could take off social studies um, and then I could also randomize and have them pick um, other types of categories for me. So I'm gonna pick Ohio. I think that's a cool one. And so. 
um, you can hit save and then this will now be updated. And anytime that you get a quiz sent out, it will include pop culture, current events, wordplay, miscellaneous, and the random category of Ohio. So it's kind of cool. You can go in and update this. Maybe one week you want to take off all the um, sections that you've already played and try something a little bit different. And then maybe you want them to be hard. So um, kind of cool. And it does give you example questions. So hard right now, it has an example question up underneath. Medium, it'll give me a new one. And then easy, another one. So see uh, what the example questions are and kind of gauge that based on what level you want to pick for your team. And then under timing, um, I have the quizzes being sent out on Monday, but you can switch it to whatever day you would want. You can um, indicate what time you want them sent. So Monday at 1130, and then you can say what time should the answers be due. So maybe you only want to give your team 30 minutes to answer them, or perhaps you want to give them a whole extra day to answer them. So I'll change this to 1130 on Tuesday. And then it says, when should we send the results? So hopefully uh, by Tuesday at 1130, everyone's answered them. So I'm going to say Tuesday at one o'clock is when I'd want my results sent. So then I just hit save and it would now um, understand on the back end when to send my quiz and what time to send those results. And then there's a section for roster. You can see who all has been participating. So right now it says that Jordan hasn't played, neither has Quinn or me. Uh, Lewis is the only one who's answered one of the quizzes so far. So it'll tell you their email addresses, when they joined, total number of quiz submissions, and what latest uh, quiz date. And then you can also select team captain. So right now I'm selected as the captain. I could add Lewis as the, as the captain if I wanted to as well. And then um, it does integrate really well with Slack. So I think that's super cool. So if you have a section like we do on Slack that's called team building, you could integrate water cooler trivia directly into that team building um, Slack um, channel. So it's pretty cool. You can receive the quizzes and, and results directly within that Slack channel. And then there's the section for subscription. So I did want to go over the different billing options for this tool. So right now I'm on a free trial. Um, on Tuesday, May 12th, my free trial expires. They do give you quite um, a while to kind of test it out and see what you like um, the best. But then there are different plan options. So you, as you can see, it goes up depending on your group size. So it's $10 a month for that two to 10 participant level. It goes up um, in different increments. So it'll increase to $25 a month for 11 to 25 participants, $50 a month for up to 50 participants and so on. You can do a payment plan, monthly billing or annual. I will say if you select the annual plan, you get three months free each year. So definitely a nice bang for your buck. So um, you can go ahead and subscribe after you've played your free trial and if, if you're really liking it. So that's what the back end of Water Cooler Trivia looks like. And we already went over the pricing. Um, also another thing, if you were a really large company, it's $500 a month for unlimited coworkers. I don't think that any of us would necessarily need that high of a level. But I will say it's pretty affordable for those of you who are uh, working in small teams or own a small business. So next up is Trivia Maker. This is a really fun one um, that I am definitely going to be playing around with quite a bit. I think it's um, a fun way to add just something kind of unique to your virtual meetings. So basically Trivia Maker gives you the power to create three different types of games. So the first game is a grid style game and you'll see it in a demo video that we'll watch. The second one is a feud style game. So I don't know how many of you guys love Family Feud. I absolutely love that game show. It's kind of like that, like your team is playing Family Feud. And then number three is multiple choice. So Trivia Maker is really fun if you wanted to use it personally. Maybe your family is having like a Zoom call and you wanna play trivia with your family or you can use it professionally. Maybe you're, you wanna quiz people on the company culture or your employee handbook if they're a new employee. So you could really set up some fun trivia games to quiz folks. So a quick tutorial. Um, the first step is that in Trivia Maker, you want to create and launch a game. So you'll go to triviamaker.com, that's the URL for this particular tool to get started. And then you'll choose your game style and theme. So as I mentioned, Going back, there's grid, feud, and multiple choice. Those are the three different game styles. So you'll select which one you like and what type of theme you want to use. Then you'll build out your game. 
along with the questions and the answers for your game. And then you will need a video platform to launch this if you're doing it virtually. So I would recommend Zoom. I think that one integrates really well with Trivia Maker. But I will say um, once things open back up and after we're past um, you know, the stay at home order and everything, and once conferences start resuming, I know a lot of large companies have used Trivia Maker to host big trivia games at conferences. So you can easily project your um, trivia game up on a screen at a conference, for instance, or at like your next in-person team meeting if you wanted to. So it's a really versatile tool. So um, some perks of Trivia Maker is that you can create and edit these games on your phone, tablet, or computer. So it's a cross-platform type of technology, and you can use iOS, Android, and your web browser. So I just put up um, a quick example of what the back end looks like. I took a screenshot from their website. So this is what it would look like if you were designing your quiz. So you would simply type in what your question is. We're doing the multiple choice style, kind of like who wants to be a millionaire. Um, and we're saying, what is the state bird of California? And then you can put in all your choices and what answer is correct. So this is what the back end looks like. Very simple to set up um, one of these games. Then at Trivia Maker, what I think is super cool is that it offers full customization. So you can build out your game to match your brand. For instance, maybe I wanted to add in the Tabletop Media Group logo. Our colors are black and white, so I want my game to be really nice, clean, black and white colors. Or maybe I'm at an elementary school where my colors are uh, orange and purple. I could add those colors into my Trivia Maker along with my school's logo. You can add in your own music to it. You can add your own team names. You can add different categories, questions, and answers. So you have total control and you can build out the game to really match your brand. So we're gonna watch um, this video. I believe this is a video that doesn't have any voiceover, so you will have to read some of the text on it, but I think it gives you a really nice understanding of the back end and how um, you can start using Trivia Maker and what other people are using it for. So like I mentioned, I definitely recommend using a platform like Zoom. You can also use Skype, Google Hangouts, you know, uh, GoToMeeting, some of those to use this tool virtually. So we're gonna go ahead and click on this. So I, I think it's such a cool platform. I have definitely been um, enjoying learning more about Trivia Maker. It's something I want to use for my team. 
Um, I, I loved that they had some of those questions in there about like their company culture or what state do we have the most clients in, you know, just general things like what year was our company founded? That might be kind of cool for your team uh, to know or be quizzed on. And then you could also just make it fun simply if you just wanted to do something fun, um, more like trivia related um, about pop culture or whatever your team really likes. For us, we specialize in food, beverage, and agriculture. So maybe I could do like some fun foodie kind of trivia that I could put on my quizzes. So um, it's a really great tool. Um, as you can see at the very end of that video, they are launching a fourth type of style game that you can play. And I, I just love game shows and I love Wheel of Fortune as well. And so it's going to be similar to that. So um, that's going to be another super fun one that I think is launching here very soon because it looks like they're getting ready to roll it out. So be on the lookout for that. Um, so for pricing for Trivia Maker, they have a free plan. It's a basic plan and it does give you cloud storage. So that means everything lives out there on the internet. So you don't have to worry about storing something on your actual computer's hard drive. It gives you unlimited games, gives you up to two teams. And then for like those grid style games that you saw, it would give you up to four categories. And then on the feud style games that you saw, you'd get four rounds of like something like a family feud kind of thing. Um, and then if you do want more info about the pricing, uh, just click on triviamaker.com. I put this link in here, but they have very affordable options. There's a premium plan that's $6.99 for six months. So super uh, inexpensive. And then there's a lifetime plan that's only $16.99 for your whole entire life. So um, it's very affordable. If you go to their website and just scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see um, all the different plans. So you'll see it kind of broken down. You'll see that with the premium plan, you get a lot more, obviously lifetime, even more. So very cool. Uh, they do give you a 30 day money back uh, guarantee. So if that's something, uh, maybe you don't like the platform or whatnot, they'll give you your money back, which is really cool. Um, something that's really cool, I know I mentioned to you guys about how people have used it at conferences uh, or whatnot. So this is really neat. You can talk with them about using this for your corporate game needs. So maybe you're hosting a large conference coming up and you wanna do something kind of neat and virtual. This would be a great thing to use. Um, you can see just like a quick snapshot right here on their website of that. And then also teachers, this is a great way. Like if you're um, a teacher that um, currently is teaching virtually, this would be a wonderful tool to use uh, to make a very interactive trivia game that your class will absolutely love. And you could even just take it into the classroom once schools open back up as well. So you can see this example of a teacher that's using it. So I think it's a fun way to learn and something definitely that I know we're gonna use at Tabletop. So next up, we're going to talk about some fun options that you can host virtually. So there are so many great free and fun options that you can host virtually. <clears throat> I know that we uh, just did two truths and a lie, excuse me. <coughs> and uh, this one is a traditional icebreaker that works well on group video conferences. And simply how it works is that you go around the group and everyone comes up with three statements about themselves. And one is, um, something that you know is somewhat believable but is your lie so like mine i said that i got married two years ago in italy and it's pretty believable but it actually is the lie because it's only been one year um so you definitely want to make it somewhat believable or just something totally out there um, all of them i think just to kind of trip people up so that's what makes it really fun so as we uh, did a little bit earlier two statements are true while one is a lie and so I think this game is really engaging when it's done right, and it makes personal facts even more memorable. So now I'm going to remember um, forever, you know, something um, about one of my colleagues that she's a really bad cook. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you, Lewis. But it's kind of funny because you can just start really learning about people um, even more. And then next up is that... Um, you could play charades or Pictionary virtually. So these are both classic games that help you to really develop your teamwork and they can both be played remotely through video. So I know I absolutely love the game charades. I always play it like if we have a game night with friends. So this is something that you could even do like if you're having a virtual happy hour with friends just personally, or if you wanted to do this with your team as a fun icebreaker on a Monday morning to get your juices flowing, that would be pretty cool. 
there are a lot of great sites out there. And I included one that gives you a free topic generator and scoreboard. So this is something it's called playcharades.net. And so I can pick um, whatever type of category. So maybe I want something easy and I want to do a new charade. So this one, it's uh, coming up with rows. So I would have to give this to um, somebody on the team. So maybe I want Lewis to act out the charade that's a rose. So what would she do? She'd have to come up with something kind of fun. Um, and then we would all guess um, what her charade is. So this is something kind of neat. You can also have a scoreboard on here if you wanted to. So maybe you have separated out into two different teams. You could use the scoreboard right here to keep track of who's winning. And then you can also have a time limit that um, you can hit start and it will automatically count down the seconds for you. So something great that I just recently discovered, playcharades.net, and you can um, easily kind of select what category, easy, moderate, difficult. Um, there's a section for Christmas. So sledding is another one that's kind of neat. Um, there's books. So you know it'll give you book titles that you could act out TV shows or whatnot. Um, so I think that's a really fun one. So definitely some uh, great options. And then now I want to um, open it up. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to stop my share real quick. And we are going to um, continue on playing a couple fun games. So I would love um, if you can just chat me, um, you can chat me privately or to everybody who wants to be a volunteer. I'm not going to tell you what we're going to do. <laughs> It's going to be a surprise. So if somebody wants to be a volunteer for our uh, team game, please pop in the chat and let me know. If not, I might have to pick on somebody. Any takers? Heather, are you willing to be a volunteer for me? All right, awesome. So Heather's gonna volunteer. So I am going to use Zoom as the team captain to give Heather a charade that she has to act out. I promise you it won't be very, very hard, Heather. So uh, don't worry about that. But, um, oh, I'm sorry, Heather says that she doesn't have a camera. My bad. Um, okay, well, we'll have Heather do two truths and a lie, and then I'm gonna pick on somebody else to do a charade. Is that okay with you, Heather? All right, I'm gonna unmute you. So be thinking of your um, two truths and a lie, Heather. All right, so she is gonna be popping on soon. Heather, just let us know when you're ready. And then as a reminder, yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Awesome, um, so go, go for it. All right, um, I have three kids. I have no sense of smell. I have traveled to five countries. All right, so pop in the chat, which one you think is her lie? All right, Tanika is saying C. Lewis is saying C, Carol C. All right, Melissa B and Kim B. All right, so Heather, which one is it going to be? Um, it's C. I've only been to two countries. Ah, nice. Yeah, that that's interesting. And you have no sense of smell, huh? I knew that about you. <laughs> Very interesting. So that's the game, Two Truths and a Lie. Super simple to do. Um, I, I know that we did it in the beginning. So for those of you that weren't on in the beginning, um, it's something really great that you can do with your team just as a quick icebreaker. And so next up, I'm going to show you guys um, how you can do charades. And so Melissa has uh, graciously volunteered. So I'm going to keep her on mute because in charades, you're not allowed to talk. But Melissa, if you can start your camera for us so we can see you. And I'm going to chat her privately. So how I'm using Zoom to do charades, I'm going to be the team captain and I'm going to chat her a charade that I uh, want her to do. So here she is. Uh, her daughter is here as well. Maybe both of you can play. So um, I'll have Melissa 
do a charade and I'm going to go ahead and chat her and I'm going to give her, let's give her, I'm going to time it on my watch. I'll give her, do you want 30 seconds uh, for somebody to guess? All right. So here we go. I'm going to put 30 seconds on my watch and then I'm going to um, put the charade in here for you. Okay. Let me know when you're ready, Melissa. Okay. So can everyone see her video? All right. So Melissa, we're going to give you 30 seconds. I'll say go. All right. Ready, set, go. And type in the chat if you think you know what it is. Look at that. A lot of people are guessing right. That's awesome. Tarshia is the winner. She says ice skating. <laughs> awesome. Good job. <laughs> Very cool. Does anybody else want to go next in our charade game? Can I pick on uh, Tarsia? Do you have a video camera? All right. So we'll have her go ahead and turn on her video camera. And I'm going to um, chat her something privately. And then we'll put 30 seconds on the clock. Um, I'm going to use my random charade generator um, to get something kind of fun. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to pick a good one for you. Okay, so everybody, the category for her charade is Christmas. So keep that in mind. And I'm going to give her 30 seconds on the clock. Um, and we can all see her video. So are you ready? Okay, so ready, set, go. You have 30 seconds. What do you guys think it is? So category is Christmas. Look at that. Nice. Heather got it right. Little drummer boy. Awesome. Good job. <laughs> very, very cool. I love it. That is great. And now I'm going to pick on one other person. We're going to go back to two truths and a lie. It's been really fun getting to know all of you guys. I know that I see you sometimes on video, but we don't get to really talk much. So I thought this would be kind of fun as an ending. So chat me um, privately if you want to be my um, two truths and a lie person. That's up next. If not, I'm picking on somebody. <laughs> All right, let's see. I'm picking on a couple people right now. I'm gonna um, pick on, let's see, Sherry. Do you have your microphone on? Sherry um, no. is... Awesome. We can hear you. She's from the Small Business Center with Vance Granville Community College. So I'm going to pick on you, Sherry. Um, okay. Can you tell us two truths and a lie in no particular order? And then we're all going to guess A, B, or C in the chat for which one is your lie. I'll give you a couple mm -hmm. seconds to think if you want. All right. Okay, so the first one is that I live on a farm. The second one is that I have two daughters and no pets. And the third one is that I love um, seafood. Hmm. All right, let's chat what we think it is. Carol saying B, Lewis, Tanika, Heather C, Sterling B. I'm going to guess something too. All right, we have a lot of B's and C's. So which one is it, Sherry? You have to explain. Um, a is, is the lie, kind of. Kind <laughs> I of. I live on what used to be a farm, but it's no longer a farm, but it's lots of open space. Nice. I do have two daughters, no pets, and I do love seafood. That's awesome. What's your favorite kind of seafood? Probably grilled shrimp. 
Mm, that sounds delicious. That's awesome. What did you guys have on the farm originally? Do you know? It was my grandfather's land, so he grew tobacco and we had cattle and he had some pigs as well. So that's awesome. Yeah. Very, very cool. Thank you for sharing. That's awesome. Cool. Well, I hope that you guys found this really helpful. I think that um, you know, just doing some like fun little games like the charades or two truths and a lie, whatnot, Pictionary is another great one, can be an awesome way to do a quick icebreaker for your team. And then last but not least, I do want to pull up um, a fun tool that I haven't gotten to play yet, but it is called Drawsome. <laughs> I know that kind of sounds um, silly, but let me um, see if I can pull it up real quick. But uh, basically what it is, is, um, or I'm sorry, it's called Drawful. It's a game that is put on by this company called Jackbox Games. And they've really come on my radar radar um, quite recently because so many people are using it. So um, it's called Drawful Tool 2 and it's by Jackbox Games. And so basically it's this really interesting game that lets you draw with people on something like Zoom or Google Hangouts Meet. So um, you can basically have, it's kind of like Pictionary, but it's a little bit more adult, um, like, you know, kind of virtual, um, more so than like if you were to organize your own Pictionary game. So it's on the computer and it's very affordable. I think it's like um, six bucks or something for like a one-time subscription. So definitely something to kind of take a look into. Um, I will play just like this quick video. It's kind of quirky, I will warn you. Um, this is their trailer for the game. So I'm gonna um, just play this really quick so you guys can see what it's all about. Yes. Yeah. You can make yeah. and share episodes with all the weird inside jokes you want. Can you add an audience feature so up to 10,000 people can play along? Okay. Nice. Hey, can you add an eraser? No, no, we won't. But we will let you draw with two colors. How about three colors? Nope, just two. Any other cool features? Oh, sure, tons like these. <laughs> and everyone can still use their phone, tablet, or laptop as their controller. Drawful, too. Here to make your next party somehow even weirder. So as you can see, um, like I mentioned, it's a little bit of a quirky game, but how it works is that um, you'll be um, basically on a Zoom chat and you'll have to input the Zoom meeting room and this Jackbox game, the Drawful, will pop into your Zoom uh, meeting and you'll actually all get to draw together at the same time. And so it'll give you like a word that you have to draw and people will have to guess or um, there's all sorts of like different categories. So it's kind of fun. It's something that um, I haven't played yet, but I just wanted to at least put it on your radar because it has been becoming really popular, especially amongst like young kids who are just wanting something fun to do um, during quarantine right now. Um, but it's, it's one of those like kind of just fun, quirky games. So um, right now, you'll see on the screen, like there's some examples of what somebody has drawn. And so it'll give you two different colors that you can use to draw something using your phone, tablet, or your computer. So kind of fun. Um, hope that you guys might, um, might very, <laughs> might, might use this tool very much, um, and have a lot of fun. So anyway, I, I think, um, that concludes my session today. And I would love to know if you guys have any questions for me. Um, I know Melissa um, is just saying that uh, she just chatted me and said this is a great topic. It's a very millennial-esque way of doing business as a 40-year-old is what she says. It seems a bit foreign, but not out of the box. So thank you for saying that. Um, it's definitely something I think any age group could utilize. Um, I know like the, the drawful thing is something a little bit more millennial or younger, but something that you could certainly start learning um, on your own and maybe implementing with your virtual team. So um, I, I think this is just a great way to start building trust and um, just rapport within your team. And please feel free to chat me any questions that you 
um, might have, and I'm happy to help. I'm going to also put up my contact information again. So you'll um, see our email, our website, and then also our social media handles. And I hope that you guys will reach out. Um, I'm so glad that um, so many of you have taken every single one of these classes. That really does mean a lot to me um, in the Doing Business Remotely series. And I just wanted to take a couple minutes to thank uh, Sherry from the Vance Granville Community College Small Business Center. It's been a pleasure working with you on this and thank you so much for helping with all the registrations and sending out email follow-ups to everybody. And then also Stacy Woodhouse with Warren County Economic Development. We definitely couldn't do this without him either. He's the one um, you'll see. My name is listed as Stacy, um, and my name is actually Kristen again, but um, Stacy is the, the reason why we're able to access um, this awesome platform zoom and we're able to host so many people and go over the 45 minute time limit for those of you that remember uh, the zoom presentation so we we thank you for letting you use your zoom account and for helping to sponsor this as well so thank you all so much and like i said don't hesitate to contact us and you have all that information on um on the screen and linda that's so awesome to hear she's gonna try out some of these uh, virtual team games in her classes so i appreciate that Thank you, everybody. And I'm also going to just chat in my personal email. If you guys want that too, feel free to reach out there as well. And um, we'll definitely keep you guys posted if there will be more series in the future or more classes that I'll be teaching. Um, and I'm sure Sherry will keep you guys all up to date via email and we'll send out the slides from the virtual team games presentation and also the, the recording. So stay tuned for that. It will be coming to your inbox shortly. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, end this presentation and just let us know if you need anything. Thank you guys so much.